good morning, everybody. Good to see you out on this rainy Sunday morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer with again. Once again, God, we give you thanks, give you praise, God. You've allowed us to come together to worship you and your word once again. God, again, this day we're asking that the Holy Ghost come and be our teacher. Father, I pray that this word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish what you will. Let it go down in our hearts, Father, that we may be the, the children that you expect of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> We're in Second Peter chapter 2. We only got two verses last week. I'm going to reread and then we'll, we'll go on from there. But I'll mention this. This morning I was listening to uh, uh, Kevin Wallace. He, ha he has a church down in the, in the Chattanooga area. <clears throat> and he made a statement that, that I think is very true. He said, the Church of America is on life support right now. He said, we need revival. He said, too many people now are just losing heart. I mean, it's the same old, same old, week after week. And they're, they're losing heart. Uh, and we see that. You know, we do. Chapter 2 and verse 1 said, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that, that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken of. <clears throat> now, in Second Thessalonians two and three, I'll get there in a second. Second Thessalonians. This is Paul. He's uh, speaking here of the day of the Lord, and he said, "Let no man deceive you by any mean." For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, <clears throat> the word falling away there uh, in the Greek means defection from the truth or apostasy. I believe that this is going to come about because of the false teachers. Because... You can't have all these people saying things contrary to the word of God and, and the people, you know, be different. They're going to be like who they follow. And in uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 13, he's, Paul says here, But evil men and seducers, that word seducers has to do with false teachers, shall worse, wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Well, if it was bad in Paul's day, what about our day? Worse. But he said the reason that these, these false teachers are deceiving other people, they're deceived themselves. You know. And, you know, it, it's in Mark 7, uh, 13. Uh, Jesus said there, told the Pharisees, said, you make the word of God of none effect by your traditions. And that, and that's, what's that? In our area, as we've talked to many times, things are going on and being preached and, and everything, just like they was in my, when I first began going to church. It's not, it's not changed, you know. But the problem is, uh, these young young ministers that are coming along, instead of uh, going to God, they're going down to brother so and so, and 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 this same old thing just keeps going on and on, you know. Yeah. Well, 
you know, Jesus said that uh, when the Comforter has come, which is the Holy Ghost, he will teach you all things. The Holy Ghost will not teach you anything contrary to this book. Because he is the author of it, actually. I mean, he would, the Bible says he, he moved upon men of old to write the scriptures, you know. But, you know, I, I was thinking about that, meditating on that this week. Jesus said there, but when the Comforter is come. You know, that's one thing about the Holy Ghost. And I know we've all probably been there. We've been going through some situation or whatever, and you may start singing a, a song or, or just praising God, meditating on God, and all of a sudden it seems like it just a peace will just settle on you. You know, that's the comforter. You know. I, w I often wonder how a lot of these people that's out here in the world today, how they make it. How do how, how they make it from one day to the other? Because there's, there's a lot of them are not that they're committing suicide. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. It, it is amazing. <clears throat> I didn't think this would ever happen. The number of, of breweries in Knoxville, Tennessee, that, I mean, that's just a few miles down the road from where we live. Every time you turn around, somebody's starting a new brewery down there. But if you if you've noticed uh, if, uh, on TV, it's like all uh, some of them most talk about is alcohol. You know. Well, alcohol may numb your pain for a little while, but like you say, when you when you come out of it, you're gonna be in more shape. Yeah. Wow. But verse 3, it said, And through covetousness shall they with frame, that word frame means false words, make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingers not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Now, the word covetous there, there mean, means uh, greed or, or lust. Go to Matthew 7 and 15. See what Jesus had to say here. Jesus said there, he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now notice that Peter said they're going to make merchandise of you. Uh, this word uh, revening in uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 10 is translated uh, extortioners. Well, I think if we've ever watched some, some of these uh, uh, TV ministers, it ain't as bad as it was a few years ago, it seemed like. Most of them already went out of business. But they'd say, send me so much money and God's going to do whatever you need. You know. You know, but <clears throat> wouldn't you hate to have to stand before Jesus Christ if you've done something like that? I mean, sure, those people. I mean, well, Peter, Peter says right there that, uh, and that their damnation slumbereth not. So that word damnation once again is the same word as perdition. In other words, deep. These people are not going to stand in the assembly of God one day. Now, well, I've always heard it, heard it said, and it's very true, the kingdom is not for sale. No. Fourth, for if God spared not the, the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. <clears throat> he, he, is t 
basically what Peter's telling here. If, if, you've, if you're a false teacher and you've done these things that he's talking about here, hell's going to be your home. Now, in the New Testament, there, there are three different Greek words for hell. Uh, one of them is Gehenna, uh, and that means the state of everlasting punishment. Another one is Hades, which means grave or the place of dis departed spirits. But the word that's used here, and it's the only place in the Bible that this particular word is used for hell, which is Tartarus. And that means the deepest part of hell. In other words, uh, th these angels, they have sinned, and we know that they, they were angels around the throne of God, and they rebelled with Satan and have been cast out. You know, they are going to be cast down into the lower part of hell one day. I think we've had some people in history that's going to be down there with them because of the evil things that they have done to mankind. Well, you, you know, these, these false teachers, there are people that are going through difficult situations, you know. And if they're listening to these false teachers, then their problem don't, doesn't ever get any better. And so then they deny that God can do anything, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's of the devil is what it is. And that, and this is what Peter is trying to tell the people. You know, these false teachers are going to lead you astray. You know, you know. You, I, I hear people calling on the name of Jesus, but then they're denying this word. That that don't work. It all fits together, folks. It, you might liken it to a big jigsaw puzzle. Every piece in there fits somewhere, and it, every part of this Bible fits somewhere. Yeah. And so, see, and, and, you know, it's just like like the puzzle. You know, a lot of times, I've not t put too many of them together or some, but you've got to sit there and study it to see where the pieces fit. And so we need to study the Word of God to see where that piece that we need fits. But, you know, that's what Peter said. He said, uh, my God shall, shall meet all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know, people, we, people need to understand, if you're truly a child of God, God's going to look after you. You know, but on the other hand, if you're listening to the false teachers and denying the word and everything, God's got no responsibility to you. We're, 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 we really are, are living in a difficult time, people. You know, you know, it's just like, you know, 
the, 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 where I read there a while ago, it, where uh, Paul said there'd be a great fall away. You know, you could have a, a, a church house sitting full, but yet they fell away. They've denied the truth. You know, and, and I, I see that today. Have you ever seen a, a little church like we're in here today? Have you ever seen one that's been fit any harder by the devil than this little church has been fit? Just uh, I'm talking about from, from January 1 up to now. You know, people, we've seen people come in here. That, uh, you know good and well they got touched by God, but you don't see them no more. The devil, the devil gets a hold of them. You know, and they need more training, uh, you know. But, you know, if they don't want it, we can't force it on them. Hmm. Verse 5. It said, And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Now, if you remember back in 1 Peter 3 and 20, he talked about Moses, or I mean, Noah once, once before. You know. Noah is a, a good example for, for us. <clears throat> Our ark is Jesus Christ. The ark is what saved, what, what saved him. You know. But people don't talk about this and that. Noah had to build that ark. And so we have to build our relationship with Jesus Christ. No. Step by step. Mm -hmm. You know, had had Noah, uh, uh, he'd never seen a, a boat before. Had Noah went out there on his own to build a boat, he'd probably it'd probably sunk. But God told him, like you said, step by step, and it worked. And it's the same way with us. If we'll listen to God, and He'll give us step by step how to live. It's going to work. The same principle, God, is, is, is fixed to happen once again. Uh, those people that are really killing us now, what's going to happen when the rapture happens? They're going to be knocking on the door wanting out, but they're not going to get out. I mean, you know, when that, when that trumpet sounds, that's it. You know, the people are, there, there is some, some change. If I read the scriptures correctly, there is some change for the people that are left here, but it's just a very slim. Six. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. That word condemned means to judge against. You know, we have some churches that are, well, they're homosexual churches. I'd like to hear their definition of that verse. I mean, see, the Bible tells us that he is God and he changes not. So if he judged Sodom and Gomorrah for what they did, is he going to judge what's going on in our world today the same way? But... They, 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 they're deceived and they'll tell you no we love God and we're going to live with him and the Bible, that's, that's exactly what Peter was telling us here these people are not going yeah 
You know. God, God said it up right. He said it up that there would be one man and one woman. That's the way he said it now. And, it, and I don't find anywhere where God's changed his mind. You know. As I've said so many times, <clears throat> you know, two of the same sex can't produce an offspring. It, it, if if they t the, the homosexual crowd takes over, it won't be too long till the world will be depopulated. But that is Satan trying to do away with God's creation. Yeah, and and most of the people, as I said so many times, they, they don't know the power of spirits. They don't know why they do what they do. They just do it. Well, this stupid thing that kids in school carry in litter boxes, thinking they're a cat. I mean, yeah, yeah, they, they think they've got little, got little caps with ears on. They say they're a cat, and they, and, they, and they carry a litter box under their arm. Well, I, I, I said this, I bet you, 20, 20, 30 years ago. I said there will come a day where teachers will have to uh, teach from behind bulletproof glass. And it's about, about there. You know, there was a kid up in the, in the Virginia shot teacher, you remember. Well, that, there'll be no charges. I understand no charges against the kid. Hey, people... Crimes have got to, they got to be some punishment through this, or people just keep on. Yeah. 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 yeah our, our, our whole society is getting turned upside down. No. Well, it all stem, it, it all stems from whenever if you if you trace it back, it all stemmed from when they took prayer out of school, and and it's just progressively getting worse. 
any time, go back into the Old Testament, when, when the, the Israel rebelled against God, what happened? They went into captivity. They done every ungodly thing could be thought of. And we're going in the same direction. As we said to begin with, our only hope in this country is revival, a coming back to God. That verse 7 said, And delivered just Lot, vexed <clears throat> with the filthy conversation of the wicked. The word vexed there means oppressed. Uh, <clears throat> the word conversation there means the behavior. Uh, the word filthy there means, actually means, you know, they were just doing what they wanted to do. You know, and, and that's very much like what we're, we're de dealing with today. Verse 8 said, For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now, the word uh, vexed in verse 8 is a different uh, Greek word to uh, verse 7. Uh, in verse 8, it means uh, to torture or, or torment. It's just like that. If you are a born-again, blood-bought child of God, and you see a lot of stuff going on right around you that's so ungodly, don't it bother you? You know? That, and that's what he's talking about a lot here. You know, I think Lot is a, is a good example for, for a lot of it. These places we just need to stay out of. You know? Of course, he... Uh, he is a good example and has helped us a lot to understand we do need to stay out of places like this. We don't have, we don't need to be doing what they do, you know. And, and so, but listen to verse nine. And the Lord knoweth how to deliver the the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. It's, it's this very familiar, familiar uh, scripture to all of us. But, it's, but it's, most of the time is took out of context. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. It said, There is no temptation taking you but, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation, also make a way of escape, that ye may have, may be able to bear it. Now, <clears throat> I know we've all heard all this talk. Well, God, won't, the Bible says God won't put more on you than you can bear. It, that's not what that says. When you get into these temptations, God will provide a way out for you. God didn't put it on you. You get. It's like, like Lot. He wasn't supposed to even go over to Sodom and Gomorrah, but he, that was his choice. And, and most of the time, <clears throat> we blame a lot of our problems on this and that and the other. It's just a matter of we've made the wrong choice. You know. Well, our time's up for today. We'll pick up God willing verse 10 next week.